Hello everyone, it's Chris from Military Aviation History and today I want to talk to you about what the Germans thought about Italian fighter aircraft from World War II. Now this is from a file that I found at the German Military Archive from 1943 and the Germans go into quite some detail about, for example, the Mackie 205, the Reggiani 2005 and the Fiat G55 which they flew against a B of 109 G4 and a Focke Wolf 190A5. So we are going to have a look at this primary source, uh, what conclusions the Germans had uh, based on their comparison flights and what that actually tells us nowadays. Uh, sadly, some of you might actually know this already from previous videos, but I can actually not show you the pictures that I took from the file at the uh, German military archive because they, uh, well, they consider these files not to be in the public domain when they're taking pictures of. But what I can do is quote out of them. So here we go. So the flights happened between the 18th and the 21st of February 1943. This is the table they themselves give you for a basic comparison, listing the type, the basic stats, and of course the type information. As you can see here, we have the name, the engine, the size, loaded weight, fuel tank capacity, cannon and machine gun armament, with the amount of guns divided by the ammo count. I actually have a really old video about the Fiat G55 from an absolutely amazing museum at Vigna di Valle in Italy, uh, back when I was just getting started with this channel really. The audio is pretty bad, but I'll use some of that uh, glorious 720p footage, yes it was the Dark Ages. Uh, so if you are interested, check out the original video as well. So anyway, for the comparison. Uh, the Germans divided this into three different uh, sections. First of all, the general impressions, right? Then a tactical versus technical comparison. And then they finish off with conclusions depending on the type of aircraft. Remember, as we go into this, uh, these are the German impressions based on their own sort of standards and their own conventions really and what they require in an aircraft at this point of time. And that makes some of their conclusions maybe sound strange, but if you're looking at this from their perspective, um, you know, it gives us really an impression and an idea of what they think is important in a plane at this stage in the war and what they consider to be useful and what not. On the whole, the Germans have this to say. The tested aircraft were, externally and from a general point of view, good. The achieved performance can partially be explained by the small radiators. This is especially true for the Mackie 205V and the Reggiani 2005. The built-in weapon systems make a good impression. On top of this, the report states that the following are positive features found essentially in all the different aircraft. The placement of the cannons in the wings was well done from a constructional standpoint. The hydraulic systems for cooling, air filter, seat adjustment, flaps and gear provide a good degree of comfort. The gear gave a good, strong impression. All three aircraft standardized around the same armor protection for the pilot. As for the negative, the report states that no standardization in the cockpit layout between the types, the layout of the instruments was confusing. Now in the tactical versus technical comparison, the Germans isolate a single plane type because they suggest that this might in fact be the best one and that is the Fiat G55. And they indicate this to be the superior of the four machines and thus they make the special comparison to the B of 109 and the Focke Wolf 190. From the four aircraft types, the Fiat G55 is considered so good that a tactical-technical comparison is required. The Germans list the following as advantages of the Fiat G55 over the BF 109G4 and the FW 190A5. A greater surface area, a better aspect ratio, and a lower wing loading. Hereby the aircraft achieves better characteristics that result in a higher ceiling, better turn rate, and better climb rates at altitude. The latter seems not to apply in full as the plane has less power to mass than the BF-109 G4. The report then continues to outline some of the various differences in the flight performance and characteristics compared to the German aircraft. And well, it's at this point that we start seeing the first amount of criticism. 
The flying characteristics are not as good as in the BF109 G4 and the FW190A5. Visibility is worse as in the BF109 G4 and the Focke Wolf 190A5. Talking then about the weaponry, the report indicates that the Fiat G55 is superior to the German machines. The weaponry is very good and is achieved without that the flying characteristics or the performance is affected in as much as it is on the German machines with the addition of the Rüstsetzer. So yeah, you might actually know the German Rüstsetzer, yeah, if you've ever seen like a BF109 with sort of a pod and a gun barrel sticking out on the wing. Those are gun pods and they are part of the Rüstsetzer that the Germans use to uparm their aircraft and of course these negatively affect your performance and your flight characteristics. Um, to make a human analogy of what the effect essentially is, this is a little bit of flawed analogy but it works. Imagine that you're going jogging right and you're out there you're giving your best but you're doing it in a little bit of a strange way you're holding your arms out just like this as you're running yeah looks a bit weird i know but just follow me for this one yeah now you can still go jogging you can still go you know running around corners just fine but now imagine doing that with sort of one kilo or two kilogram dumbbells that's like two to four pounds of dumbbells, yeah? Well, rather light actually to your overall mass and probably to your overall strength. But as you go jogging with your arms outstretched holding those dumbbells, you're gonna feel that, hey, things are not as they were before. And it's a little bit strange. So yeah, that's a little bit of a human analogy of how, what it is like to fly, you know, a B of 109 with or without these gun pods. Hope that makes sense to you. Anyway, the Germans also have some substantial critique here about the potential weaponry that these aircraft can carry. Because on the whole, yes, you know, the offensive firepower of the fixed weaponry that the Italian machines have is outlined as good. But there is a quite an important disadvantage that they have as well. A substantial disadvantage of the Fiat G55 compared to the German fighter aircraft is an unsuitability for fighter bombing. This cannot be ignored as on all fronts, fighter bomber usage is becoming ever more important. Remember, this is early 1943. So yeah, we're starting to see the warning bells there, uh, you know, what, what the Germans consider to be important at this stage of the war. But let's move over here to uh, construction. The advantage of the Fiat G55 seems to be that the aircraft is well suited to the use of the Daimler-Benz 603. With this, an immense performance increase is achieved and the current disadvantage of being slower will be negated. In addition, the aircraft can use a 3cm cannon. So yeah, that would be like an MK-108 for example, right? Now, the DB-603 is different to the DB-605 that all of these aircraft, bar the FW-190A5, which uses a uh, BMW engine, use at this point in time. So this also shows you that the Germans, as they're doing this comparison, they're thinking about how can we upgrade these machines once that becomes necessary, or maybe it is already necessary, right? And do we have an engine that actually fits into the aircraft, and can we make this work? And it seems to at least suggested here that that is a possibility with the Fiat G55, which is in essence a good point and a, you know, a check on the, on the aircraft there. But going here over to the uh, general con conclusions on the aircraft, the Fiat G55 is on par with the German fighters in climb and altitude performance, superior in weaponry and range, inferior in speed, although it must be considered that the Italian DB605 produces 100 horsepower or less. Again, on the engine here, there's a special note that also says that Fiat indicates that the use of the Daimler Band 6 or 3 will be possible, and it is assumed that if the aircraft receives that engine, it will be superior to all the selected types of this test. But that might also indicate that, you know, if, if the BF109s or the uh, FW190s get upgraded, that that uh, performance difference over a Fiat G55 with a DB603 uh, will once again be negated. We don't know. Conclusions then here uh, on the Fiat G55, and these are really the overall conclusions. Aileron control authority is high. Rover authority could be slightly better. In roll, slightly less maneuverable than BF109G. Aircraft turns well and tight. Slightly unsteady as a gun platform. Stall behavior resembles Spitfire. Vision on me takeoff mediocre. In flight, forward visibility limited at high angles. Side and rear is good. Takeoff and landing very easy. 
Aircraft cannot be used as fighter bomber due to the placement of radiator and gear. Radiator big enough to be used in tropical scenarios. Of course, that is just the Fiat G55, so the report then continues by providing overall conclusions, less detailed though, on the, uh, all the other planes that were involved in this test. On the Maki 205V, the aircraft is unstable on the pitch axis, has very high elevator impact. This results in overpulling on the controls. The aileron authority is good, as is the roll rate. Vision on takeoff mediocre. In flight forwardability limited at high angles. Side and rear is good. Aircraft is a temporary solution, only produced in small quantities. Then on the Mackie 205 N, aircraft has good rubber authority. Is a good gun platform. Roll rate is good. Aileron control slightly weaker than BF 109G. For climbing and tropical usage, the radiator is insufficient. Vision on takeoff mediocre. In flight forward visibility limited at higher angles. Side and rear is good. Not usable as fighter bomber. Aircraft is in serious production. Development is ongoing. Then finally, on the Reggiani 2005, flight characteristics can be deemed as adequate. Aircraft turns well. Roll rate like BF109G, but rudder is slightly weaker. Takeoff and landing are harmless. Pilot seats situated slightly too far from the control sticks. And the aircraft cannot be used as fighter bomber due to the radiator placement. Vision on takeoff mediocre. And in flight forward visibility limited at higher angles, side and rear is good. Okay, so it's quite interesting to see what the Germans thought about these machines. And it looks like, at least with this test, they found a favorite among the uh, four Italian machines. But as you noticed, uh, the Germans don't necessarily consider the, uh, the Fiat G55, which they have outlined to be the favorite, to be so good that it could potentially be a substitute to their own aircraft. And of course, there is some talk even nowadays about whether the Luftwaffe was going to take an Italian designs and adopt it and produce it themselves. But I think if you look at the result of this test, for example, then more importantly, actually, at what a production change would entail. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about like retraining your workers, uh, retooling the factories, uh, restructuring the complete uh, supply infrastructure for a given type of aircraft. I mean, you're talking about a project that might take half a year to get going and then a full year to achieve the same sort of uh, production rates or outputs of B109s and FW190s that you currently have. So yeah, I mean, we're talking also 1943 here, early 1943, so it makes little sense for you to jump over to an Italian machine at this stage. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope, guys, that you tell me what you thought about this test, you know, whether you're interested in having more sort of these German primary sources that I find in the German military archives um, based on the Luftwaffe on here on the channel. And yeah, if you like the video, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon or via channel memberships because it's viewers that support me on these platforms. They are actually the ones that fund my research trips to these archives and of course to the museums. And also please consider sharing the video that has a big impact as well. And as always, have a great day and see you in the sky.